Yes, it's game time. Kyle, why are you? Come on, posing? come on, Kyle. See. Oh, hey, I was letting you take the lead there, Carol. I I thought that's yeah. what the plan was. You yeah, but once talking. I but once I stop, you know, you're supposed to just pick it right up. You would think that, but honestly, you just have to spam out this nonsense gibberish every single time you have to host one of these things. You know, like, um, hey, welcome to Murder Hobo Inc. This is Cred, Cthulhu Rises. All of these players die, although that's a different acronym. And and so much better than what it was. Uh, hey, everybody. I, what is this? Uh, episode 7, 8, 9? No. Uh, this is five. That's five. Is it really five? I thought it was four. Okay. Yeah, right. that, that's how I'm actually writing my notes broken down by uh, episode. <laughs> Uh, and none of it will come in handy whatsoever in any near future other than to annoy me. Oh, yeah. I'll keep you straight. Thanks. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, before we even get started with tonight, got to say a few words, and then we'll go around making some sort of introductions of these people on my stream. Uh, follow us on Twitch. If you're watching us right now, you can take a look at our YouTube archive over on YouTube obviously. If you want to chat about uh, uh, D&D and what I'm going to do to these terrible people tonight. No, what terrible things I'm going to do to these... No, you had it right the first yeah, time. Yeah, you're right. You're right, you're right. right the right first, first time. time. You can join us on our <laughs> Discord server. Uh, if you want to chat us up on Twitter, you can do that, at Mhobo Inc. As well as hit us up. I mean, obviously, this week we're not doing one shots. It's all campaign week of some variation. Next week, though, at mhobo inc or at mhobo inc at gmail.com if you want to play at the one shot next week. Uh, we'd like to thank our sponsors, Pirate Dog Dice, for when you're rolling like Bran, Pirate Dog Dice. They'll give you an all 20 sided die. Yes, you are still only level two, Cleo. Did you pick out Damn. your spells or no? That's a no. That's she's lying through her teeth. There go uh, my dice. And I... then finally, if your game stinks, like Caitlin's lying techniques, uh, then may I suggest Adventure Sense for when making it smell nice and wonderful. Oh yeah. Oh um, gosh, I know I'm forgetting something. If you want to hear the audio, tiny URL at I'm level three already because of my skillful navigating and potato making. Jesus. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Guys, the chat is the most entertaining place where I'm going to get distracted, lose track of whatever I was saying, and then get corrected. But. <laughs> okay. You have, you have audio. ADD, man. You have I am suffering today more so than other days uh i lost my book again so i'm writing i found it though i uh installed a little beeper oh ooh, oh yeah eh, no okay <laughs> <laughs> i've lost my mind today folks he's the one that went insane i mean we're all set now the gm went crazy you're yeah, supposed to make us, our characters crazy. You're not supposed to be the one that goes crazy. Uh, I found in order to understand insanities, one must be insane themselves uh, and then inflict it upon others. <laughs> uh, anyway, if you want to buy some cool RPG swag, you can also find that on one of the links around the table here. <laughs> Soon we are going to get the cred t-shirt uh, of a terrible looming Goliath overlooking a beautiful idyllic beach. Or a volcano. Or a volcano. One if I ever freaking clear out the workload. <laughs> you know what, Carol? You're not the only creative person here. We do have Frank. He does awesome stuff as well. Yeah, but I, I, I saw Frank's offering. <laughs> no, Frank actually really does do good stuff. But I feel like the, this this one needed a bit of an upgrade. But most of the stuff. like wow. the, the don't Saturday... pat yourself on the back, Hey, Frank. hey, 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 hey. hey. <laughs> The Saturday one, though, the Saturday uh, logo is amazing, though. Absolutely amazing. Perfect. I love it's that. It's like thing. his own self interest. I know, him to right? Try and top our campaign. 
but we are not going to let that do that. I would slam my desk, but I have a lot of water here. So let's go around introducing everybody. Ernie. Oh, um, well. Yeah, so my name's Ernie, and uh, I'm playing Riley, the half-elf uh, warlock. And uh, my favorite thing to do is to learn new skills and, and uh, things. And uh, I've already learned navigating, so I might avoid doing that since I've already mastered that skill. And um, we'll see what else I can do on the ship. Because I've already helped with uh, quite a few tasks, but I'll, I'll explore. So that's a little bit about me. On to you, Bran. Ooh, go for it. Bran is not having the best of times lately. He needs a mental health day. <laughs> yes. Bran is their physician. Possibly a monk, too. You never know. But yeah, he's seen things. Already. <laughs> Poor Bran. It was all fine, well, all according to character. Mm, Carol. Yeah. Or Caitlin. Mm. Mm. Who do I like more and who do I like less? <laughs> Carol, and on to the Anja, episode. Go ahead. <laughs> you want me to go? Oh, all right. So, hi, everyone. My name is Carol. Uh, I am a longtime gamer, occasional GM, and a commission mini painter. Uh, hey, you can talk to me on Twitter too at uh, muses underscore touch. <laughs> um, but also uh, show in us this where game... the muse touched you. Oh, shut up! It's part of her show. She grabs her one of her fingerings, points it out. It's well, I'm gonna have a show a at dark. some point. Truth be told, I'm gonna have a show mini painting stream at some point. Just not yet. <laughs> I'm still working on it. Uh, but anyways, in this campaign and in this reality, uh, I play Anja Jaeger. Uh, I am a hunter or ranger, whatever. Who will be a monster hunter? Ha <laughs> ha. If you make it there. And if we finally... make it there. I think we're going to go insane before we even get to the island. So. <laughs> and finally, and my most least liked, disliked, person on the stream caitlin who are you I who are playing? Harmless. <laughs> i don't think you heard what i said but go on you said least like <laughs> anyway i play cleo <laughs> the asmr wait one of my sorcerers for tonight's game i'm not that bad but you know save the youngest for last because we're the best I'm going to pretend I didn't hear that. And I'm so going are you to... the un youngest? In this right now, yeah. <laughs> Gosh, I Maybe. was allowed to get a vaccine early. Yeah, mine, mine is on <laughs> uh, Saturday. Oh, I've got one down, one to go. Mm -hmm. Same. My, I have like health issues, though. <laughs> Oh, I get she it. has issues though. Yeah, DJ. And Brand will get you though. Yeah, Brand doesn't get there yet. It's not his fault though. He doesn't. Are you sure if I get it, I'll just go more insane. Uh, just Maybe go to Ohio. everyone qualifies here. We're not far away from our qualifying mess. But anyways, let's let's play. Let's play? play. Let's play. All right. We play. We want to get to just the island. as a quick overview for these guys because they weren't paying attention last time and they don't read the little title card at the very beginning. You uh, started in the laboratory of Fen Manor or the library, one or the other. Bran had just seen a gigantic monstrous creature dive back into the water, driving him completely insane. You all met Dale Guthrie, a red-headed youngster who had stolen the cargo, the Wilcomite, not the Jade, as one of the uh, idiotic adventurers thought it was, the fool. Uh <laughs> in order to escape this horrible town. And you all took pity on him. You explored the laboratory. You took a few things. None of the gold or the riches, though. I was very surprised about that. You only took reading material. Gosh, hey. I don't hope you don't have to pay for anything ever. Hey, Riley, since you have all the notes, didn't we get grab some, some gemstones? Said, didn't well. you get some gems? Because I need my cut. You need your cut from what? 
I need those for cut from the friggin' what gemstones. Cut? Yeah, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> we'll get to that point later. Gonna... These are study materials. They are not to be sold. <laughs> Brand, <laughs> Brand digging through the library and not finding very many answers or no answers to the thing he saw outside the window. Went storming off to go investigate uh, the dead dwarf that you guys had let die in a terrible and what? awful, painful way. You uh, jerk. That is not true. You're going to care to recap. At least be accurate about it, man. I mean, man. I think heart, heart attacks attack. are painful. He had a, yeah, yeah, it yeah. was terrible. But and and Bran did assess him and realize that he had a chance of saving him if he uh, didn't run off. So Kyle's not inaccurate. Kyle's not Just a dick. <laughs> a dick. I, I like to think that I did give you the opportunity, but honestly, with a rushing thief, you guys had to get going. Uh, after that, you slept at the Dagonet Inn for the night, woke up to find out that your ship needed repairs, more so than what had been originally thought. And then the cat came by and then let the captain know that the repairs on the ship were all done. Something fishy was going on. Didn't ching. Yeah. And so... Deciding something awful was happening, you decided to collect all your crewmates, send Dale Guthrie off with one Tim Toffel O'Keely. Uh, hold on. Tim Toffel O'Keely. Nice. Who is a little halfling who rides giant bird. The Ren Riders, and you sent him off to... My notes real fast. <laughs> you sent him off to a monastery in Uskin, I believe. Uh, which is I believe one of so. The neighboring countries uh, making your way escape. You realized you forgot Jeremiah yet again, Caitlin, <laughs> your guardian and protector who clearly needs your guidance more than anyone else. Uh, gathering them and the rest of the crew from the cauldron, you made your escape where the townspeople were even creepier than the first time you met them and proceeded to swarm after you when they realized you were leaving. You got away from them, but with final words, as Ernie had said earlier, you're all dead, and the sea will swallow you whole. So you take the rest of the day. You are sailing away. You manage to get away from the Bay of Rizante and continue sailing forward. The crewmates are visibly shaken from what has happened to them. They've never seen anything like that in their sailing careers. And let's get some dice rolling here as well, because you don't have time to be frightened. You need to get to work, get the sails unfurled, swab the deck, cook one of those things. And so around the table, let's go with a nice little skill check. Starting with the youngest, Carol. Yeah, you're funny. Oh. I think it's the other way around. I think I'm the oldest one in this oh, okay. group. Okay, Unless... oh, my bad, my bad. Brand, you're the think... first one. We all know who the youngest one here is. I'm it's already right. You're doing the rigging and doing your acrobatics check at disadvantage because you stayed up last night. Yeah. Are you rolling? 19. Oh, I am focused. That's really good. <laughs> yeah, no, with that same uh, focus you had trying to find that fish creature, that image has not left your mind yet, and you are just getting out of there. What is it? And you've been out on sea for about a week now. This is starting to become habit, and you get that done. Ernie, are you going to try navigating... Uh, is there a new task that I can help out with? You know what? No, I'll help with navigating. I, I still need to work on that skill. I, eventually, I'll be proficient, I think. <laughs> <laughs> no, but okay. Uh, what do I need? Uh, that is your survival check. Survival. Woo! Two. Plus two, so I got four. Woo! I navigated very well. Are we stuck? 
<laughs> sideways. You were no. stuck sideways. We literally in end up back at the uh, oh, at the no. town. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, oh God! That's... And with welcoming fins, Brand, I mean hands. Sick. How would you suggest such a thing? Oh, I would do it if I was the GM. <laughs> uh, oh. uh, unfortunately, really. the first mate watches you and tilts the steering wheel back in the correct <laughs> direction. I, I thank the first mate, and I continue. <laughs> <laughs> Caitlin, what are you doing? We've got rigging, navigator, swab the decks, although navigation has been done at this point. Cook. Yeah, do right. Or you can check out the ship. I don't know. Do what you want. What do you want to roll? What um, you got? I'm just going to walk around the ship, talk to people, I guess. I don't know. All right. Go ahead and roll me a persuasion check, please. Seventeen. Good. Yeah, you are talking to everybody. <laughs> they are visibly shaken. The only person who seems completely unbothered by this is Nebby the cook, who has been sleeping on top of her fabulous potatoes the entire time. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you notice that the ship's repairs have been done well. Uh, it turns out uh, uh, Riley was wrong. You need yams to plug up the holes in a boat, not potatoes. Who knew? Who knew? All right. And finally, Anja. Um, so what do we still have left? Okay, you can also help with rigging. This is an entire day event. You're not doing this all in five minutes. I will do that. What is it? It's acrobatics, you said? Acrobatics. All right. Let's see. Well, that's not one at least. Uh, 13. 13. You are able to help out with the rigging as well. And the ship is underway. And night falls. What are you folks doing? Pran. Once the work is complete for my task, Mm -hmm. Bran simply goes downstairs and kind of cloisters himself to his area. He takes out pen and paper from his kit mm-hmm. and begins drawing what he saw the other night, along with some of the more distinct features of the people we saw in town, La- uh, labeling it and putting questions next to it, trying to get it all down, trying to cross-reference any medical notes or information that I would have in my own books for any particular conditions or such that would align with an ailment that would cause this. It looks a little bit like that, and you get all that. And, oh, yeah. Sorry, I got to brag about all the new books I got. Thanks, Stimmy Check. <laughs> You do that. Night falls and the crew themselves are quick to fall asleep. Uh, Aiden and uh, Nebby are up into the night and all of you find yourselves falling asleep unless there was something else you wanted to do. But it's been a long day, all things considered. Yeah, other than I go, well, I'll spend part of that day after I'm done with the rigging, if it's still light out. Mm-hmm. I'll be on the, the railing, staring down at the ocean, try, looking for that friggin' sea monster, whatever it is that put the three holes in our ship. Make a perception I, check. Keeping keeping in mind that um, I did not see what, what Brahansa thought, but mm-hmm. I do know there is something. Uh, I probably don't want to succeed on this, right? That's uh, up to you. No, I'm kidding. Uh, let's see. Just my perception. My perception is four, so that's a 12. So not great. Not um, great. It'd be nice if I roll over a 10. These, the sea is completely and wow, utterly devoid of life, as you can tell. 
like yeah. unnaturally so like i don't see any fishes or or is it just that this the water is murky water is murky okay then yeah. there's probably stuff underneath it but i stare at it for a good long time and we cut to the camera below the ship and we see the ship passing over and we can see anja looking down in the water Something yeah. is looking back up at her, and a fin swims by the camera and back up. And we'll say we end up going to bed at night. Oh. And sometime in the middle of night, give me a perception roll at disadvantage. All of us, or me, or who? All of you. You are all sleeping. Okay. Woo. All right. That was cut. Oh, Jesus Ooh. Christ, the night we roll above a 10. Oh so that's gosh. an old friggin' 11. 16. Oh. <clears throat> Riley and Cleo. Very nice. You haven't been bothered, and you've always been a light sleeper. And Riley, I mean, when you're sleeping, you're not actually learning anything. You awaken in the middle of the night, unsure of why you're awake. Something has woken you up. And then you start hearing something on the sides of the ship, on the sides of the room that you're sleeping with. Um, like, what sort of noise? Like a scratching or sawing? Light but solid thunks, like like a claw digging into the side of the ship, crawling on it. Oh, um, we are all in our own rooms, right? We each have individual rooms, or oh am I sharing God. the room with someone? You are sharing the room with everyone. Oh, okay. And um, as you look around, the crew isn't there. Oh, that's there's just the four of you. Okay. Um I I uh go over to Bran and I whisper and I, I try to wake him up a little bit. I'm like, hey, the the crew's gone and uh I, I think I hear claw sounds outside of the ship. Something's up. And then a- after I wake up Bran, uh I also make sure that Anja and Cleo are awake as well. If he successfully wakes me up uh before he even gets to speak, I kind of start grab him by the collar and nearly punch his jaw off as I'm startled. And I, so Brand still has his face covered at night as a religious aspect, but there's a little bit more seen, like his lower jaw is a little bit more visible. Uh, and like, you can see that his, his like lips are slightly like uh, scarred up, like slashes across it. Uh, kind of like a uh, maybe a burn mark across the lower part of his chin on the uh, left side and then he'll like stop and realize who it is before he knocks his block off kind of toss him away okay are you sure uh, you want to you wanna roll to see if you actually go through and hit him or do you want to just be nice no 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 I'll be nice okay because we could D12 it, guys. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm cool with this. I like this. <laughs> um, cool. I, either way, uh, I make my rounds quickly to try and wake up everyone and explain the situation just how I did with Bran. I just can't. like how you did with Bran with everybody do, almost hitting you? Well, preferably not that. No. But... All right, D12. I'm going to jump. I get, in the face. Gen- oh. Gently wake everyone up, whisper the situation. This, <laughs> From Mr. across the room. <laughs> Mr. Well, G- Mr. GM. Yes. Yeah. This in my case, was I dreaming anything? Let's see. Whether it's due to the sheer exhaustion, you Do appear nothing. to have not any dreams or at least no recollection of it. Okay. She usually means you didn't dream at all in that case. Well, 
Um, no, so then I don't try to knock his block off. Because if it was a really scary dream, I could see myself go, ah! But well, you no. know, you woke up with everyone else. Do you still want to try and knock Riley's block off anyway? <laughs> I mean, if she's awake. She I'm was awake gonna... with you. She okay, well then, I, I'm just going to explain what I heard then. And what I think is weird that the clue's, crew is missing. Yeah, you start to utter what happened and the rest of you hear these sounds. <laughs> sounds climbing. There's more than there was the first time you heard it, Riley and Cleo. Um, cool. I think we should go explore that before <laughs> it's too late. <laughs> so I guess I'm going to slowly creep go or creep or uh, I'm going to slowly open the door. <laughs> I grab my weapons. I don't I just have I'm going to have them out. Although I'll I'll put like a what if I get for a ranged weapon? I don't remember too many characters. Come the on, door David. has issues opening and you're going to have to give me a strength check to open it. Um can I do a wisdom to see why it maybe isn't opening like it's wedged or locked from the outside? Mm, yeah, you can give me uh, perception or insight. Perception or insight? Uh, yeah, perception or insight. Do, 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 do. All right, perception. Uh, 13. 13? Yeah. It's a soft something up against the door. You don't know for sure but honestly it's not going to take much but it takes more than normal to push it open okay so strength check now if you want yeah someone else can help you if they like i said i can i mean if you wait I, i'm pretty strong <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> please help me <laughs> all right i i join you i join you because i actually have a, I have a strength, uh, so. i do have a quick quick question while they're getting doing that uh, are there windows or ports holes to the area we're in at all? No. Um, uh, and for those who know ships better than I do, apologize if I get my uh, uh, nomenclature wrong. I believe the ship is called a caravel. You have the four rooms in the bottom. One is the big cargo hold, which is fully loaded. A ship's quarter, cooking quarter, and then where everyone on the ship sleeps, unless it's a nice evening out, uh, in which case they sleep up above. And and are there any other exits from this room, or is it just to the outside? Just the door in front of you that's being blocked. Um, all right. I rolled. It wasn't great either. And I rolled in a... What the hell did I roll? Oh, wait. Six plus three is nine. Damn it! We'll keep trying, man. We'll keep trying. Unless Riley, if you want to help me, you give me advantage. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Bran will kind of come up and just go up to the door, and then he'll just kind of. It almost looks like it's a gentle push, but at the last second, he'll like his hand, his palm will quickly move, and oh, then nice. transfer a bunch of force to it. Yeah. And on the other side, a shuffle and a clank of steel on wood. And Jeremiah is there on the floor. It appears he fell asleep uh, on the other side of the door from you. What an asshole. And oh for God, those who have the you. great perception, which I do believe would be Bran in this case. I get plus four. Not quite good enough. Okay. Bran, okay. there's a sudden stillness on the ship. You heard shuffling on the top deck. And as Jeremiah made the sound landing on the ground, it stopped. And there's just this light of something going into the water. I will motion for everyone to hold up. And I would like to stealthily kind of creep out and try to keep to the shadows uh, 
as much as possible to take a quick look around. You do so. You're in the cargo hold at this moment, other than Jeremiah on the floor. It's, hasn't woken up or anything. The cargo is full. There's not a lot of places to hide unless you are hiding. Yeah, even then, this cargo hold is loaded down. As Captain Kenza said last time, when she said you didn't have enough room for Dale Guthrie on the ship, you did not have any room for Dale Guthrie. It is loaded, packed down. The ship is sinking low into the water, as it has been the entire time. Hey, question. Answer. Is it, Jeremiah is just sleeping? Or is anything a foul? Does he look like he's just sleeping? Ah! Sleeping off all his drunken mess. I, mean, I know, he's like a drunk and mess, right? Wasn't that like a full day ago? Because he drank, yeah, and then it was the next morning where we went to the ship, and he then it was a full day, and now he, it's... He probably drank again on the ship. I mean, he's probably got a probably got a flask, you know, there or something. But anyways, is he... Toilet like, wine, whatever it is. <laughs> is he... I like this idea that Jeremiah is just a drunk. <laughs> He's a young kid who's being influenced by a bunch of sailors. Guys. No, think of it as a kid who just finally moved out from home and finally has freedom. <laughs> a really strict That's religious home, this. too. Like, very strict and religious. <laughs> yeah. He is asleep. Okay. <laughs> I just to make sure he's not like dead or uh, injured asleep. or asleep <laughs> or passed uh, My out. kid's in the other room. He's asleep. <laughs> not my kid in the other room. I mean Jeremiah. <laughs> oh, that came up terribly. It did. And All the right. FBI come to your house. <laughs> it wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> You're a bad influence. Thanks, man. Frank. <laughs> You made the FBI go to your house? Yeah, Frank's a terrible person. Frank probably just had a bunch of his friends prank him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, continuing on. Uh, Jeremiah is passed out asleep, uh, still sleeping deeply. The cargo hold is loaded. There's not much place to hide, and it does look empty other than the five of you. What the hell happened to everybody? I will head back and inform them that inform them that no one is in the cargo hold. I don't know where everyone is. To, I'm headed um, to Kyle. Uh, do we know where the crew generally sleeps? If it's a nice evening, they would sleep on the upper deck. I'm was it a nice evening? I'm headed there. It was, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'll uh, also quietly follow up to the deck. Okay, who's taking the lead? I'll take the lead. Yeah. I was going to say, I don't think Riley... Unless you want to take the lead, Riley. <laughs> I mean, I saw you, you start can... to head that way, and I'm like, oh, that's a good idea. And then I started following. Okay, that's fair. Anja, Riley, Cleo, Bran, what's the order? Between the last two of you. Cleo, well, and I'll cover the back. You'll cover the back. All right, let me get a die out here. Okay. Hey, Anja. Yeah. As you start climbing the stairs, you see a pair of glowing green eyes through the slats. Oh, God. Okay. And make a dexterity throw. Saving throw, please. A dexterity saving throw. Mm-hmm. Jesus fucking Christ. I cannot roll above a 10 on the die, but that's still... That's still an 11. God damn it. What's wrong with these dice? You yeah. take three damage as a cat Meow. runs underneath your foot down the stairs and you fall backwards into Riley. Oh. Riley, make a dexterity saving throw, please. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. Are you the gentleman who catches her or just lets her drop? 
Well, I already made the deck save of 16. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to catch her or do you want to let her drop? Well, 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 so I have a choice now that I already made the save and I'm going to just succeed? Well, or is that basically just saying means, I won't get hurt no matter what I do? I think what it means is you don't get hurt. So you either let me drop and then, you... I want to hear it from Kyle. I want to hear it from Kyle what happens. Oh, come on. <laughs> you oh, take I, a step back, Anja well, falls but the thing the is, ground. No, no, no. Oh, so that's what... Okay, sounds good. Yes. Sounds good. Exactly. Sounds good. You might help catch her, but she still takes a little bit of that damage anyway. If you mm. want to be courteous, that's up to you. Yeah, I'll, I'll try and be courteous. Also, I don't want to... I know I can't step back too quickly because Cleo's right Cleo's behind me. Cleo's right behind you. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. What? What did I trip over? Just Nuke not the cat. the cat. Oh, the cat. That's right. Wow. Did what is? Can I make an insight check? I mean, or did he like? Actually, yeah. Can I make an insight check on the cat to get his demeanor? Like, is sure. he afraid? Like the way he's he running? is. Uh, he's that you disturbed. Up. He's disturbed. Oh, maybe I don't need to make an insight check then. Yeah. I mean, hey, that's are... above a 10. Holy crap. That's a 15. So that's 19. 19. Yeah. No. Yeah. Nuki uh, is a scaredy cat right now. Something has bothered him. Oh, boy. No, hold All on. Right. Let me double check that. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, I guess uh, it's either him or her. Nuki. Nuki, Nuki is a girl cat. There Nuki's you go. a girl cat. Yeah. Cool. All right. So I'm going to keep, I'm going to sort of dust myself off and keep going because I got to figure out what the hell is going on here. Okay. You climb up on deck. It's, and it's quiet, right? Instead so of... quiet that as you take your first step onto the creaking boat, you don't hear a footstep. Hmm. Insight from my... Can Arcana? I... Arcana? Arcana. Or an intelligence insight, your choice. Wait, does Anja the only one, is she the only one that is in this yeah. silence area right now or at the moment, yes. Okay, so never mind. I Anja, try, like I would turn around to talk, but then you could probably I'll turn around to talk the silence. It'd be either either turning away from it so that it's at this area is silenced, or the fact that they see me talking and don't hear anything. They'll probably draw the conclusion. Yeah. I don't have it trained, but I'll make it arcana check just for shits and funsies. Uh, and I won't know shit because it's like a two. So so it's a three total. I don't know shit. <laughs> okay. I'm going to step out, though. Along with not hearing anything, you see that the water is covered in mists. There's still the light gleaming off from the moon up above uh, quite large I would say you know you get the moon that's like the silver dollar this time it's a huge moon and there is a greenish quality to it as you step out and a cool you look coming. around on deck hold on Cleo I apologize you step out on deck. There's no one up there. The long boat on the side of the boat is missing. And it's all quiet. Oh Cleo. No, no tentacles coming from the moon. That's actually coming up from beneath the stairs as you walk up there. No. <laughs> April Fool's. No. Anyway. <laughs> April Fool's Day so much. <laughs> I really hate this day. Oh, we should have pranked all our we should have pranked all the viewers by TPKing the party tonight. But it was all in my head. No, I thought it was gonna happen and I'm gonna walk away from my computer if it does. <laughs> I literally forgot about it and Good. Janelle just reminded me that it was April Fool's Day. Uh but let's quit fooling around. Mm. Riley, if you take a step up on deck, you notice the same thing. Cleo, same. Bran, you step out. And maybe something out in the water at a distance. 
underneath the moon, but it's really difficult to tell. And... Jeez. Do I see ripples in the water through the fog that would lead to that speck? You do. And what's worse is now that you've actually mentioned that you're looking for ripples in the water, around the ship, ripples in the water begin to appear. Is the ship still in the water? Yes. Do or I see if the not anchor's because down? Because you see ripples. The anchor is down. And unless someone else has something else to say, five claws make their way over the ship railing. And you see five deep ones. Oh, no, sorry. My bad. You see four deep ones make themselves out of the water. Some of them, the one similar thing is that these huge lamprey jaws on all of them, one of them does have this light that starts to flicker on, hanging above its head. There's this froggish quality to all of them. Save the last one who comes up, and despite one hand being a claw, and scales and a rather deformed face, he holds a staff. Question Any of their eyes glowing green? As a matter of fact, they are. So, this is what I saw climbing up. Probably. Real initiative. Yeah. Ooh, um, that was I'll, really good. Have, yes. I, have I gotten rid of the exhaustion? You have gotten rid of the exhaustion. Unfortunately, seeing these things, well, we'll get to it when it's your turn. Uh, where did I put my pen? Okay, what is the order that we had, folks? I have a 22. Ooh. Actually, rolled well for a change. Holy crap. All right, Riley. Seven. You did not do quite as well. Cleo? Rolled a what for your initiative? That it pops up on your screen. An eight. Sometimes, but I don't actually read. I am illiterate. I don't know if you all knew that. That's why when I talk about Lovecraft, I'm completely talking about out of my ass because I've never read anything. And Bran. Really? Well, you've never read Lovecraft? I don't believe that. 21. 21. All right. Anja, you get to go first. I will go and engage whatever the lead one is. Hey, wait, let's see. What have I got for stuff to do now? Probably not much more stuff uh, than I had before, right? Hey, really? I don't know. You tell me. These are not aberrations, right? They are not. Okay. Um, Although there's something it. off about them. Do we all notice that there's silence right now? I mean, yes. As soon as you stepped out on deck. If you would like to have done something and stayed below deck, that's up to you, but it's... I mean, nah, there's people behind me, so I want to back, back down, but... I, I just want to know if I, I realize that like I can't do like maybe verbal spells or something. You do realize that. Okay. Uh, All right. Well, fortunately, whacking things with weapons doesn't require a verbal component. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go there. I have two weapon fighting, so I can uh, get up there in one of those spaces and I'll make a couple of attacks. Which one did you say you were going for? Whichever one's in front. So for whatever I get to first. Okay. So, uh, oh, those are good. Those are pretty good hits. Um, let's see. So I have a scimitar and a short sword. So that is a 21 and an 18. Both of those <laughs> will hit. And so what's my idea? Which, and I believe, let me look up the ability here. 
You can add your, okay, that's right, that's right. So I added my ability modifier to the damage of the second attack too. All right, so 2d6 plus eight. Yeah, that was not a great roll. So that's four plus eight is 12 for the two hits. Yeah, that was uh, awful. <laughs> for him or it or you they. Slice your swords through the creatures and they just kind of hit this dense slime and it does cut it but it seems to just take the blow and shrug uh brand it, that, it said those were directed at the same creature by the way yes, yes. okay yeah mm -hmm. right uh brand i apologize uh you said there's one with a staff there is one with a staff the the two Monst more monstrous looking deep ones are between you and it. Very well. I'll go to one of the first ones and I will use my attack action to attack it. Okay. Uh, 19 uh, to hit. That'll hit. Four, four points of damage. This is the left one or the right one? Anja is on the left one. Um, Sorry, port and starboard. Uh, I will take uh, the starboard one then. Okay. And then I will use a Kai point mm -hmm. to take a bonus action for Fury of Blows. All right. So the next one will be 20, dirty. Okay, hit. And then that'll be for six points of bludgeoning damage. And then the last attack. That's only an eight. That'll miss. And it's just thunk into slime, thunk into slime. And then it turns its body on that last attack and it just kind of slides off its skin. Did it appear that it actually hurt it? Not quite as well as Anja did. I think big and monstrous. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, like fighting an ogre, you know, even your blows, they do hurt, but they're not quite doing as much as punching an average man would. And that leaves us to our deep ones, and they will make two attacks on Anja. Oh, goody. That is a 21 and a 9. Well, the 20, obviously, the 21 will hit and the 9 will miss. You take 7 damage as this jaw comes down and takes a bite on you. And Bran, that is going to be a 20 and a 14. The 20 will hit. And with its claws, it scrapes at you with five damage to you. And the one in back, the most human looking of them all, raises its staff and sound suddenly returns to all of you. The whap, lapping of waves, this chanting in the far distance, And he will cast um, Anja, you look like the more dangerous one. And he sends this blue, slimy guiding uh, bolt your way. And that is a natural 20. What? <laughs> I'm going to friggin' murder oh you. I'm going to murder you on the spot. I believe you. I believe you. Mm -hmm. You need a dice cam then. I real oh, for doing that or for rolling natural twenties. For proving you're rolling natural twenties, you and Frank both like to show off that you got it. So. I do, but I honestly believe both of you. So man, so that's like a fireball. At I'm gonna die. Level Jesus. one, you you might survive. Uh, <laughs> three, seven, twelve, fifteen, twenty. I'm down. 
Jesus Christ. 20, 20, yeah, I have, I have 20 points to start. 24 points at max, man. Oh, wait, how many did you do? 23. Yeah, that one killed me, but I am down. Jeez, you are what, down. What hit me? A guiding bolt at level one. <laughs> uh, yeah, With a yeah, natural yeah. 20. That, that would screw you up. All yeah, right. yeah, that's what that's what did it. It probably wouldn't. All right, Cleo, you're a little bit faster than everybody else, or the one and only person. <laughs> uh, Anja has just been knocked to the ground with this slimy bolt of glowing ooze, and there are two deep ones upon Bran. There is the deep one, human-looking deep one in the back, wielding the staff that fired the goo ball. You hear sound again. You hear waves lapping. And you hear chanting coming out from beyond the waters. Wait. Anja's, like, unconscious? Unconscious. Yes. Yeah, aka making death saves when it gets back to my turn. Okay. So, yes... Because he nat 20 me, that jerk. <laughs> Are death states separate from saving throws, technically? Um, Ooh, yeah, it's something, you... it's its own entity. Mm. Do you making, want making me conscious. Would be I the assume best we're thing. thinking about bless, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so oh, I think. I... Does it apply? Because I kind of wonder, because it is sort of a saving throw. Oh, we... If you bless and then attempt to heal her, that's more than an action. Uh, you would have to lose bless. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's either bless or healing. That's why I didn't know. It's I would blessed, probably like... heal before bless, it, but I understand your dilemma. Uh, I, I get it too. As somebody who likes yes, to it throw would work on the death thing. saving throws, but yeah. It's up to you, Anja. You want me to revive you or give it's, her it's up to you? It's, She's it's, it's literally out. it's up to you. The thing of it is, Anja okay, can't answer you. <laughs> I can't. I can't answer. She you. She has this green slime literally covering her face. She's not unconscious, as you would say. She's just out of the fight right now. She's no, no I'm unconscious. Mm-hmm. I'm doing it for flavor. Oh, here. fine. I know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, basically, if you make me, I'll, I'll give you the option. Both are good. Both are good choices. I'm just thinking for everyone in the party, at least. Then, like, we're definitely guaranteed more so to like hit them because you get the bonus. It's your choice, Chloe. All right, I'll do bless. So Cleo. everyone, get- <laughs> Cleo, I come do. on, man, Bran. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. So everyone gets an extra D4 to roll on your attack and saving throws. All right. Is that just once or for a certain period of time? That's for period um, of time. Every round. Every round. Yeah, it just says before the spell <laughs> ends. Basically, it's every round while she's concentrating on it, and you can get it on both hits and saves. But just once per round. Yeah. No, both. No, oh. you, grab you, a d20, grab a d4, and every time you roll, roll those two together. Yeah, okay. it's cool. not, yeah, it's every single roll. Cool. Um, cool. I'm gonna Chain move over to over. Anja and cast cure wounds on her. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm I'm the warlock with cure wounds because I right. have the unearthly mutation. Nice. <laughs> All right, what do I get back? Uh, oh, I need a roll, don't I? Yes! <laughs> Do Are I get... Sh- oh, this isn't an attacker or save, so it doesn't matter. Save, no. So, <laughs> let's see. It just do do, it. do do 1d8 plus charisma. Which is going to be good for you. I just hate D&D Beyond because it doesn't let me add it. That's a spell. 7 plus 5. 12. Yeah. Nice. Very nice. That's what you got. The goop falls off of Anja and she's <gasps> and Riley, you also hear the chanting in over the water and the cadence of the chanting itself is 
familiar. Like in my brain packed familiar? The Caden itself is familiar how it's being said as opposed to what's being said. Um, Ah, I got it. So like an Arcana check will let me know. Oh, roll a perception. Perception. Yeah. Uh, not so good. Ten. Ten. Yeah. We come to return. We come there, return. We come there, return. Can't make out much more than that. And top of the round, Anja. All right, well, I spend uh, my move action picking myself up. Um, I assume That's just I... half your move. Yeah, I know. But the problem is, is that if I try to move out of this thing's range, because I'd love to go after the guy, the, the, the staff fielder. Yeah, but I've you? got somebody right here, and I'll provoke, basically. So I'm going to take a couple more strikes at him. No, mm-hmm. no Cleo, you, Cleo, you did bless. That was your action. Yeah. 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 No, and you oh, know what? Okay. I look, here's the D4s for that bless. Oh, yeah. I will be using. <laughs> well, that would have been a hit, anyways. Although that one. All right. So the first one would have been as a 16 uh, plus her bless. It's going to be like way over. It's, it's going to be over 20 plus, which I assume hits. Yes. Uh, but the other one, 7, 13? 13 will just hit this one. Oh, yes. Thank you, Cleo. If I'm hit by one, then, then it was the bless that gave it to me, actually. <laughs> yeah, all of a sudden, I guess Anja, you know, Anja definitely is freaking out because all of a sudden she just went to... I rolled max damage on that, which would be 20 points. Whew. Now, is this both of them combined? Or... Yes. Yeah. Oh. If, oh, if you want me to give them separate, let me know. Nope. You are good. It's 10 I will 10. let you know. I just got to double check with you. Yeah. It's 10 and 10. Because okay. I literally rolled murder hobos came up on the murder hobo dice. So. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no. This time you cut deeply into the gut oh. of this thing. And it's standing and very frustrated at you. Bran. Bran will remove his dagger and come stabbing up onto the one that Anja just struck. Okay. Uh, Second. I might be able to make that if I roll max on the d4. Nope. So that's a 10 total on that one. That'll miss. Um, I will. Yeah, I'll use my second Kai point to do another flurry of blows. So this is going to be bludgeoning only. So first attack is going to be over 20, 20, 23. Okay. For four points of damage. And then the second attack on it. Is a nat 20. Yeah! Yeah! All right, I'm rooting Brand. for you Four, because this is a deadly encounter and I hope you survive. Eight points of damage. All right. Gee, I never would guess. What? No, it's <laughs> fun, guys. You make those striking blows and <coughs> chanting out over the water gets louder and louder. From here we come, to him we return. From here we come, from him we return. And a very familiar voice to you all. Uh, Yes, Anja. Do I hear that, by the way? Uh, It's on his turn, but yes. Everyone hears this. I'm just curious. Okay. Yes. And let me see. Let's get those deep ones uh, going after you. I'm sorry. Yeah, you that, did deep, not... that same deep one is still alive? Still alive. You, oh you should have rolled a little bit better. Damn it. Okay. Uh, 22 will hit you. Uh, at this point, you're both attacking the one. So, Who is it hitting? 
It is going after you, Anja. Well, I, yeah. It's fair. Does six points of damage to you. All right. I'm still up, thanks to Riley. <laughs> and the other one, Bran, as you have turned your focus from it to Anja's, Runs by you if you want to take an attack of opportunity. Um, I would actually like to. Can I make an? Uh, can I make an uh, athletics check to try to stop it with my attack of opportunity? Yeah, absolutely. Um, contested roll. Are you trying to grab trip? What's your trip? trip? Mm-hmm. Uh, 13. 13. And. Oh, 15. Damn. And he gets by you hopping over like a frog, and it will make one attack at Riley and one at Cleo. Riley, oh, you first. With an 18 on the die, I imagine I'm going to hit you. You yep. take nine points of damage. Ooh. X. Cleo, 17 to hit you. Uh, five I'm- damage. We went from max to almost minimum. <laughs> five isn't too awful. Five isn't too awful. And oh. with that, we go to Cleo. This thing has hopped within your mitts. You hear the screaming, chanting out on the water, getting louder and louder. What would you like to do? Oh, shit. Oh, yeah, that's right. And uh, give me a constitution check, Cleo. Um, a constitution saving throw. I apologize. You're proficient check. in that. Do you it's get to use the bless throw. on, your own, on yes. your own concentration for bless? <laughs> no. <laughs> that, that's not she a gets saving throw? Three targets. 15? 15 passes. Oh, You're good. that's true. I guess she gave it to us three. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not oh, that's me. true. <laughs> but you did it you succeeded yay all, all right you're still concentrating on the blessed spell <laughs> thank god for that what would you like to do to this monster in front of you or any of the other monsters um sorry what was he gonna do Only one. <laughs> <laughs> what? If I do toll the dead, it's just one creature. It's just one creature, yes. It's a it's effective though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I guess I cast that, so they just have to make a wisdom fifteen saving. Natural yeah. twenty. Damn it! Really? Natural 20. I feel like as an April Fool's joke, and I don't believe you. (laughs) Damn it, because that's such a good spell. It is a good spell. It would have been great this one instance. All right. (laughs) We need to take a chunk out of him so it's even more effective, too. Mm -hmm. Riley, you're up. If Cleo, you're done. (laughs) Yeah, I think that's all I can do, right? Um... So there's a deep one on Cleo and I, there's a deep mm-hmm. one on Anja and Bran, and then mm-hmm. there's the one with the staff, and then what about the other one? Because you said there was four, right? Did the other one just I go mistook. back? There's three, right? There's three. The fourth <laughs> is the figure out in the water on a long oh. boat screaming. Oh! Screaming. Oh, chanting. Okay. Chanting, screaming, cadence. And and just to uh, uh, make sure I heard you, it's they were chanting, from him we come, from him re- we return. From him we come, to him we return. Yes, that sounds okay. right. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, 
Just wanted to know. Um, and it's standing on a boat. Yeah. That's weird. If you had a better perception check last time, you would see more. But at this mm-hmm. point, you see oh. a figure out in the mist. Got it. Although so... the moon is lighting him up nicely. Got it. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, let, I'm going to try and whittle the one on Cleo and I down. Uh, so it's probably too close for a ranged attack. So, you would be at disadvantage, yes. Uh, I'm going to use my unarmed strike. Okay. Uh, let's see here. That is proficient. So 14 plus proficiency plus dex. 19 to hit. 19 will hit. All right, and then one second while I actually do the damage. It's 1d4 plus dex. Uh, seven damage with piercing because I my claws. Yep. All right, and we start off at the beginning of the round. Oh, wait, do I get extra damage from Bless or just a chance just to, hit? to hit? Okay. Mm-hmm. Darn. Andre, yeah, I know, on. right? All right, so this thing is still here. All right, I'll make another couple of hits. One attack first. Okay. Uh, 12 plus 1. So it's 13 plus 6 is 19. That'll hit. Yeah, he's about to go down. Don't he... roll crappy. No, I didn't. I rolled another 6. So 6 plus 4 is 10 points of damage. And you run him through oh. with the one blade. And then I'm going to move action... To go to the other guy, and actually, uh, yeah. spellcasters or the spellcaster, uh, the to spell your ca- friends or to the spellcaster oh. who took you down. No, I want to get the spellcaster who took us down. They tend to be very, they tend to be fairly dangerous. Yeah, take its attention. I'm that's part of the plan. Although I am, I'm not like you healed me, but I mean, it took a hit, so I'm not looking great here. Mm-hmm. Do I get? So actually, yeah, that second hit when using two weapons is a bonus action, right? So I can Correct. actually try to hit them. All right, so now I'm going to use my bonus action second hit with my short sword. What the hell did I? What the hell did my die just go? <laughs> what the fuck? All right, I don't know what happened there. Gosh, was, I'm the guy this? who usually misses his dice. No, I, where the hell did it go? All right, well, I'll pick another D20. I accidentally <laughs> grabbed a D12. That was smart. Oh, Jesus Christ. I keep grabbing D12s for some reason. It's dark in here. What can I say? All right, well, that's a 13 plus 6. Uh, plus 6 is 19 on, on the caster. You'll hit. Right. Yeah, so that time was a 1. Plus 4 is 5 points of damage. All right. Oh, that was you take a difficult. large cut right across his chest with that puny amount of damage, really. And well, he's... you notice that as you cut through this blubbery skin, yeah, like a snake almost, this flab of flesh falls down, and underneath is that same scaly texture of the creature you just killed. Blech. And you can see it sh- shifts underneath. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, Gosh, God. Am I, am I B2? Sure. Water. With the human skin. There yeah. you go. Uh, All right, I didn't Brand. see it. Oh. Right. Uh, Brand will turn back to the one attacking uh, Cleo and Riley, and he will uh, uh, yeah, I'll just try to yeah, I'll just try to attack it. I'm not going to try to do anything funky. So, uh, dagger first. Uh, are, are you coming from behind it, and will there be any bonuses? Uh, since we're not using a map, I'm assuming we're not doing that. 
But mm-hmm. if Kyle wants to, that's fine. Do you guys want flanking rules used against you as well? Not really. No. No. <laughs> you don't get yeah. any bonuses then. <laughs> so that's only going to be a total of 10 to, uh, for the first attack. That'll miss. And then I'm just going to use a bonus action for my uh, unarmed attack, which will be a 20 something. That'll hit. Yeah. Uh, total of 24 for seven points of bludgeoning. Okay. Ooh, yeah. It is starting to look almost as bad as the other one had previously. Okay. And with that, ooh, new, fresh. (laughs) And yes, in deep one, this guttural clicking speech, you do hear the words, fresh meat. Which one said it? uh, The deep one that is being surrounded by three sides. Bran, uh, 15 doesn't hit you, does it? And I imagine a 22 does, though. Yes. And you will take 11. Nope, 9 points of damage. That's the other one, excuse me. And Anja, with you, it attempts to take a swing at you with this staff. (laughs) <laughs> and misses utterly yes i can't afford to take it uh and with that i will take a perception check from everybody yes can't I... work that way cleo 24 24 uh crap no nope, that was shit uh it's like seven. Nope. Riley. Ten. Nope. <laughs> Cleo. Twenty-four. Yes. yes. What is with you? Jeez. All right. You see out on the water, the mist is spreading away. You see the long boat of the Hazel Folly. Bound <laughs> and tied is Captain Kenza. Unable to speak, muffling wide eyes in fear. And you see Aiden Pasela with all of his tattoos. The first mate, he is clearly the one who is screaming. The tattoos, the tentacles on it are moving and writhing. Sometimes his skin puffs up in areas where these tentacles are. And he screams. Ia, Ia, Cthulhu Fatagan! And proceeds to stab no! Captain Kenzo, killing her in a sacrifice. Oh my god. How far away are they? They are about 50 yards out. Ah, I can't just jump from one ship. It's alright, I'm busy anyways, but no, I can't no, just jump no, from no, one ship. No. This is a other. tiny little boat. As he stands out on the moon to do this. So 50 yards out? 50 yards out. 150 feet. Mm, can I uh, take a moment to equip my crossbow? Well, you can certainly do that on your turn. Oh, got it. Yep, yep. The I... sea also begins to move underneath you where it was this classic still picture underneath waves and a rumbling underneath the waters up here. Cleo, you're up. Wait, so everything's dead right now around us? No, you have a deep one. There is a monstrous looking thing with a human skin and as you saw, Adam Pesela has just sacrificed the captain in what looks like some terrible dark ritual. Okay. Did we attack the thing with the human skin? Uh, yes, it has been attacked. It has um, been injured. So you're in melee combat with one of the deep ones, though. Yeah. I can't think of the 
Can I do Witch Bolt? Which one are you aiming for? I guess the one <laughs> If the one in front of you, you have disadvantage to hit. because. Oh, wait, what did I have. like? <laughs> affect me? Why? I can't back away from him. Uh, well, he, he tried to hit you. But you can't. Is but everyone you... else to me? I mean, Riley's on one side of you. On the opposite side of the deep one is like five Graham. feet of me. Within five feet of you, uh, or, no you know, one. Like, no one's in five feet of me except for the monster. Except for the monster, yes. Okay, then I'll cast sword burst. Okay, what am I rolling? That's <laughs> 15. I swear if you get another 20, I'm going to throw my computer across the room. I rolled a 6 minus 1, 5. All right. Whee! Wow, so much. So much damage. One damage. Wow. <laughs> Is that your last spell slot, too? Well, that was a cantrip. Cantrip. Which, oh, that's You're a fine. cantrip? That's awesome. Which yeah. one? Sword burst? Oh yeah, that's a cantrip. Yeah, that that is an awesome spell. Yeah, just do it all the time. So you take one force damage. What does that mean? Do you get pushed away? <laughs> it's like he took a magic point of massive magic missile damage. It's a four. It's it's like an invisible bolt, or in this case, an invisible sword. Yep. All right, Cleo. So if you're done, we'll move on to Riley. It's okay. I just picture it's like paper cuts. <laughs> All right. I'm going to try and claw the thing again. Okay. So, D26 plus three is nine plus proficiency 11 plus D4. Ooh. 11 plus four. 15 to hit. Yeah. You hit. Woo. All right. <laughs> Damage. Uh, let's do D4. Three damage. Oh, wait. Plus my deck. Six. Six damage. There you go. All right. He's taking a slice out of him. And we are at the top of the round. Let me roll for the new combatant who just showed up. What? Okay. What do you mean, new combatant? To the help waves us? Under the water? Is he coming over the rail? <laughs> the first new challenger has entered fight. <laughs> Anja, you're up. Don't worry what I say. All right. I just say things for fun. So I'm going to assume I should to, I should roll all this together because I have a feeling this thing is a long way from dying. So I'm going to make a couple hits. Blessed, I believe, is still running, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's pretty... Okay, so six, uh, 25 on the first one. Hit. And 9 plus 2 is 11 plus 6. 17 on the second one. Hit. Come on, murder hobos. <laughs> that wasn't so good. Three plus eight is 11 points of damage. All right. <coughs> you do some serious damage still. Flesh skin is peeling away, but you are cutting deep down into the creature itself. Bran, you are up. Uh, I will continue uh, attacking the one I am focused on. So, since I seem to have very bad luck with my dagger, I will just strike it with my hands. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be a total of 18 for a hit. So that's going to be 6 points of damage. Okay. And then bonus action, another strike uh, that's going to be another hit. That's over 20. You guys uh, are doing surprisingly four well. four points of damage. All right. And that's my turn. That's your turn. All right. I think... Sixteen hit you, Bran. Uh, no, it does not. Yes. Deep one swings wildly at you. Oop. All right, nat 20. 
Nope, that's a nine. Crap. <laughs> that one hits though for some reason. Yes, yeah. that does. Uh, odd numbers. It says it right here in the book, guys. Uh, <laughs> right. Sure. And with that, Actually, no, I I'll, I'll take that because that means crits never happen. Dang it! Oh my god, that's such a great point. <laughs> <laughs> although, although, yeah, although critical fit, although you don't critically fumble on a one either, because it'll hit. That'd be amazing. Yes, the the uh, priest, the cultist with the staff. <laughs> you all belong to us. Your sacrifices will be made to make the old one happy. You, dreamer, will tell them how spawn of Ben, you will be a lovely sacrifice. You will rejoin our fold with your mother. <laughs> Shit. Wait, Ren. what? Wait, what was that last part? If you didn't hear it, too bad. No, you no, I heard Push it. Carol. I'm just trying to get it. Push Carol. And to steal from another is the most delicious pleasure of all as he stares at you, Riley. And with that, oh, a creature twice the size of a whale rises up from the side of the boat. Oh, no. April Fools. <laughs> you wake up in your beds. What? Seriously? But strangely enough, all four of you <laughs> are not in the same place you were when you fell asleep. Probably one of the most vivid dreams you've ever had, Anya, Anja. And for those of you who bought into that this was an actual fight, I'm <laughs> going to have you roll a dread saving throw for me. Hands up, people. Who believed it? Sure. All right. Even what I said at the beginning of the session, that, that, that friggin' TPK the party and say April Fool's. And have it all be a dream and I just had. God Wisdom damn it. rolls, right? Wisdom rolls. Okay. That is a, hey, a 20. Well, good job. You're not getting any worse. Well, I am. I'm getting a lot worse, but considering it was my friggin' dream. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. What's, what's a, what does an epic failure do again? What'd you roll? That one. <laughs> you take two levels of dread on top. But you're, what do I have? I have one, right? So that's three. You're at three now. You're not getting the insanity yet. Riley, what'd you roll? 18. You pass. You feels familiar and it's very different, but at the same time the strangeness oddity, it's something that you could roll with. Cleo, what'd you roll? Wisdom saving throw, please. Eighteen. Nineteen. Nineteen. Oh, you did almost as well as Bran. <laughs> it's just a dream. Uh, if the gods were to speak to you or through you, that is clearly... That's not how they would do that. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just a dream. Did we all just have the same dream? Did you? I'm going to ask. Well, when I wake up, I mean, I would have known where people were when they went to sleep. Also, the crew is there, right? Uh, the crew is not there. Were they up on deck sleeping? They were when you left them. Okay. But if, would I notice that the other three were not are not in the same position? Uh, you know, the where we went to sleep. I know I'm not in the same place. 
Buenos, the other three years, it's the same deal. Mm. Yeah, I would say the you would know, sure. And everyone's awake. Oh, is everyone awake? Do we all like all wake up at once? Woke up similar at times, yes. Hey guys. Did you all just have a dream? Oh. What I dream? Uh, I mean, I usually dream. Well, I noticed you're all like me. I didn't go to sleep here, but I'm here. We all, I mean, unless were any of you awake before I just woke up? Uh, I mean, wh where did we wake up, Kyle? Because I fell asleep in my bed. You fell asleep in your hammock. Hammock. You woke up in yeah. someone else's hammock. Take a Wait. smell. That that's that's dwarf smell. You woke up in one of the triplets' <laughs> hammocks. So, am I able to use wisdom to realize that I was moved in my sleep? <laughs> like I realize that is not my bed. We're all in random beds, so it's like someone who maybe wasn't familiar with where we normally slept put us in these wrong spots. Well, you could ask the people the... about it eventually. You remember? Okay. You have three other people who could have moved you. I, I'm just saying, like, life. is my character wise enough to realize the implications beyond just the fact that, like, oh shit, we we slept walked or something? Uh, you can. Eh, what kind of check would you like to make? Well, I mean, I, I would think that'd be like a wisdom. Make a wisdom check. Yeah. I mean, that's not what I would want to do, but I got nine. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds reasonable that someone put you in the wrong place or you fell asleep in the wrong place, one or the other. All right. What time of day is it? If you go up above docks, it is the morning. Everyone is well rested. Uh, recover all those spell slots and hit points. It's like it was, never happened. When I wake up, I'll go up top. Um, how vivid was this dream compared to other dreams? By far the most vivid dream you've ever had. But I mean, there certainly was. I mean, you go back and you think about it and a huge moon. That's never been a moon like that before. A still ocean. If you were on a lake, maybe. The things that came out of the water. Resembled. The thing you saw at Fen Manor, though. Did I... I forget. When I was looking at the books in Fen Manor, did I spot anything like that in there? Uh, you did not. You saw okay. bits and pieces, like dorsal fins, um, that kind of fish-like tail, the angler fish jaws. You saw bits and pieces, but nothing that really made a cohesive um, creature. So, all right. So it makes reasonable sense that this is, quote unquote, a fever dream, enticed by the events that happened recently. That's not sure. not unheard of. Mm -hmm. Um, I will actually go seek out the captain's cat, though. As a medical professional, I know that animals can have a soothing effect on individuals. Sure. Uh, Nuki is on top deck watching any of you who actually come out from down below and if any of you try to move in a way that she can't keep an eye on you she moves so that she's watching all of you do I notice this? you're a very perceptive person yes you do this seems a bit unreasonable and unnatural. Then again, I have suspicions that this 
cat may be the familiar of the captain. So that would indicate that it has higher intelligence than normal. I will see if Nuki will let me pet her. Roll a... Oh, let me see here. Give me one of them animal handling rolls. Nine. No. (laughs) Just you coming closer. She doesn't hiss at you, but she certainly maintains that six feet of distance. Maybe even 15. Cats are smarter than people, and you know, sneezes travel a long way. Yeah, I wear a mask. Yeah. (laughs) Okay, then it's safe at six feet. All right. Yeah. Uh, I will let the cat be, and I will just go get some food. Okay. If any of you don't have any more role playing you would like to do at the moment, oh, I got I got lots of things rolling around in my brain right now. The uh, first mate, mm-hmm. does he actually have tattoos? He does like have tattoos. The dream? Is there any? They're sig- not moving. No, but is there any significance? Like, would there be anything that maybe I've uh, uh, Cthulhu wise, you know, mythos wise? Oh, Are those tattoos like that. I assume you're not going directly up to him and asking, "Hey, do no. they, those have to do with Cthulhu?" No, no, but I mean, considering I have, um, I do have that knowledge. What the hell is it called? Because I don't. Because I can't put it in D and D. Yog Sothery. Yeah, Yog Sothery. Wisdom and proficiency. Oh, I was supposed to look into trying to add that on there. I don't think it lets me though. All right. That's a plus six. Uh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, it's only an eight. Really want to make that one. No, definitely. There are. He has squids and octopi on several cases. Cthulhu, as far as what you know of these dark gods, and honestly, Cthulhu hasn't even been mentioned other than in your dream. Squids and octopi seems pretty, pretty on board with that. Hmm. Any other questions? That was a big one. I was gonna. Uh, shit, I don't remember. <laughs> that, that was like a. All big... right. Is well, Captain Kenza what, around? Captain Kenza is around. She's at the head of the ship. <coughs> yeah, I want to approach Kenza. You see a vicious scar on her. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> well, um, I figured it would just been a vicious scar right here. You know? Riley, you and yours seem to have been slept very well this morning. Yeah, actually um, had a pretty strange dream where uh, some deep ones attacked the ship and you were actually sacrificed by Aiden the first mate. It's quite odd. Deep Did ones. you have a s- similar dream? No. All right. Interesting. Okay. Just wondering. And then I walk off. <laughs> <laughs> Very confused to look at you. That's fine. I, I I don't care. It's for my own knowledge, I, not hers. Sure, sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So with that, you guys have escaped Rizante. You've put a day behind you. And at this point, we're going to call this downtime. Okay. I'm going to go around with you. You each have two activities you can do. Uh, that can help hurt or and you can go off board with this if you like um you have some research to do if you want to dig into the books letters journals that you found for those who have uh obtained dread this will be your turn to try and get rid of it during this long rest and this is taking over the course of another couple of days as you make your way to the island of Farzine. 
uh, the crew itself has settled down a little bit from being farther away from Rizante, but they are still as rattled as slightly less rattled than they were yesterday. And you might try and help the morale of the ship. What would you guys like to do? And those are just examples. If you want to pick something else completely different off the board, let's do that. And I will roll a D4 to see who goes first. Cleo, you're not paying attention. What would you like to do for your downtime activity? I mean, I have all my health and spells back. Right? You have all your health and spells back. Um, oh, yeah. Well, we'll talk about that after that. Is yeah. there like a cargo area on this? There is indeed. It is one of the reasons why this boat is so low in the water, because you have a ton of cargo down below. I don't have a lot. Yeah. On board the ship. I thought you like threw out half my stuff. I did. It was enjoyable. <laughs> can I like explore the cargo? Yeah, you can explore the cargo. And you don't have to roll anything. During your downtime, you're just looking through the cargo. You see uh, marble, a few uh, lumber, hardwood from the, oh my goodness, uh, from the mainland. You would assume maybe that Farzine doesn't have this kind of information or this kind of stuff. There are uh, swords. Um, armor, that kind of deal. There is a lock chest. Uh, several of them, in fact. Um, and if you care to go in and dig a little bit deeper, yes? Yeah. You open them up, and there are cannons. And Why the ship's so heavy. <laughs> this is a trade ship. This is not defensive, and, you know, magic exists. Ideally, whoever's on top casting spells would be doing more damage than what a cannon would do, although guns in this highly inaccurate. If you're looking at mechanics, you'd be rolling at disadvantage no matter what, if you were to try and shoot one of these things. Uh, but the damage on that is real nice. Um... Uh, yeah, cannons, stone, lumber. There are some books, uh, potions in some. And that's what you find down there. Okay. And Nuki the cat is watching you as you are digging through the stuff. You also see the satchel of Wilkamite that was the last thing that you grabbed. Riley, what are you doing for your first downtime activity? Yeah, I want to go talk to Aiden, the first mate. <clears throat> and uh, I'm going to approach him and uh, I'm going to say, so I obviously I, I study. I like to learn more about, you know, the, the nature of the universe. And uh, I, for, recently I came across a, a name Cthulhu. Does, do you know the name Cthulhu? I, I'm quite interested to learn more. Never heard of him. Oh, okay. Um, have you? But uh, if you're looking to study, may I suggest this? And he hands you a piece of paper rolled up. Ooh, I take the paper and I unroll it and look at it. Star charts. Star charts. To oh, be a better is... navigator. <laughs> this is great, Aiden. I really appreciate this. This is an amazing <laughs> gift. Uh, is there anything look, that I can do I to help you? I see how much you try. Maybe study those a little bit longer. You try really hard, and you're trying to learn, and you're trying really hard. And that's Th what counts. Thanks, Aiden. <laughs> I take the star charts and walk off. <laughs> Anything bigger you want to do as far as downtime? Uh, Something that takes a couple of days. Oh, okay. Uh, well, then... Beyond studying the star charts, I guess I want to read the entire collection of journals belonging to the Welby family. 
All right. Um, that I picked up from Fen Manor. Yeah. All right. Real quick. You have journals written by Lawrence Walby. Yeah. Isidore Walby. Merwin Walby. Scott. Isabel. Byron. And Beatrice Birdie. Beatrice Birdie? Beatrice Birdie. Birdie, you would imagine, is a nickname. Ah, got mm-hmm. it. So what was the second name? Isidore. Isidore. I-S-A-D-O-R. Got it. And essentially, the tale of the Walby family is, we talked about it before, Lawrence was the quartermaster of a ship for Aldo Fenn. He pirates they were terrors of the sea amassed enough wealth that they were eventually able to start a small pirate town but eventually the ships the navies of several countries came after them all at once laid siege to the port town of Rizante and in a desperate calm Aldo recalling some strange rituals summoned aid from deep down below which sunk all the ships uh isidore oh sorry along with the strange rituals there were promises of blessings if they traded with them and he eventually had a daughter from one of these blessings named Isidore. And from there, Isidore, quite generic. The journal actually is much shorter than Lawrence's, only lasting about 20, 25 years or so. Moving on to Merwin uh, Bradley and Renald, who in turn were also traitors of a sort. It appears those three obtained more sacrifices and blessings to bestow upon the creatures they found below, either through capturing people, slavery trade, or simply getting them drunk and having them wake up in bed next to a monster. And this is from the point of Merwin, the oldest of the three. Scott reads much the same way, as does Isabel. Uh, When you get to Byron, however, uh, things take a uh, different turn. There are less able to find sacrifices to give. Trade is mostly done for gold to keep them up, but the other families have either been killed or have disappeared unknown to what happens which finally leads to the daughter Beatrice or Bertie Walby and that tells of a renewed revigored connection with the deep ones with these creatures underneath and a union between her daughter, Isabel Walby, where something went wrong and her daughter ran away from Rosante. Never to return. And this journal goes on a little bit longer and it talks about an obsession with the sea this one goes 30 to 35 years and this strange calling to answer Uh, did I give you the daughter's name? Isabel? Isabel Walby and each of these actually do have uh, crude drawings of 
the writer and the family members during that generation. So you do have pictures of Isidore and Merwin and his brothers uh, all the way down. And you do have a picture of the late, uh, the last Isabel Walby, but she, having run off and disappeared, doesn't have uh, a part in this journal, just a picture drawn. Okay, mm-hmm. that's interesting. Is there more information on this uh, ritual that uh, Lawrence or um, Aldo casted? Ooh. Roll me. I'm going to roll a d12. You roll me a d8. Okay. Three. Seven. While Lawrence was intelligent enough, it was mostly for trade and a business might. And that is one of your downtime. Anja, Hmm. what's one of the things you're doing? Oh, boy. I want to, I want to, so want to investigate that first mate. Riley, Nebby is bringing you potatoes to eat as you study over these books. Nice. Fortunately, we're out of yams. I'm sorry. So that's okay. (laughs) So, just out of curiosity, if we're all in different locations of the ship, the cat can't do watch us all, can can it? It's a large overview of what's happening as you make your way to Farzine. You are lucky and you didn't actually roll any combat encounters or regular encounters, so. Yay. No, Plus, I, I mean... like downtime. Downtime is fun. Keep in mind, you have three dread. Downtime is when you get rid of large amount of dread. If you want to do that as part of your downtime activities. You're doing other stuff in between, too, I imagine. I do. And I, I want to... Do I know where the first mate... What's his name? Aldo? It's Aldo. Aldo Aiden. Fenn. Oh, Aiden. Sorry, Aldo. Aldo oh, Fenn is, is the pirate captain say, from I was going to say, I didn't think it was... I thought it was Aiden. All right. And oh. so far, only one of you has actually met Aldo Fenn. Well, seen Aldo Fenn. I mean, there's got to be, like... I, I keep feeling like this has got to be a reason why he was in my dr- in that dream. He was a cultist. I, mean, I didn't suspect it, so it wasn't like my you know subconscious was working overtime here. Mm-hmm. Um, do I know where his where he bunks? I mean, I imagine at this point I know where everybody does. Uh, he is one of those who actually sleeps out on deck no matter the weather. Where's his possessions? Doesn't appear to have any. Clothes, swords, it's all with him. All right, that's fair. Then this is a thing I can investigate. Because I was thinking that it's three levels of dread. That wouldn't be for her to do something stupid like that. It wouldn't be. It makes sense. But if he's got nothing that I can investigate, then I'm not going to do that. Um, no, pretty much I'm going to put my focus in trying to refocus, I guess you could say, to get rid of as many levels of dread as I possibly can. Probably spending a lot of time up. Maybe I'm sleeping out on deck, too. Uh, sure. I, I'm close to nature. I mean, I, I'm a ranger. Sure. So how are you exactly going about getting rid of this dread? If I recall what brought it on, it was this reading of this thing that was in the ocean that could swallow ships and that something other than the whales, dolphins, and typical marine life, something with a little bit more intelligence and terror lives under the water. And here you are out on a boat. In Keeps... the middle of that water. How are you? How's your character getting through and over that dread? By doing what I've been doing right along, going and staring. I keep looking at the water. It's something productive. 
and the longer I don't see anything, you know, it's like I'm also looking for something, you know, like things are normal. Okay. So, if like some, you know, if this sea monster doesn't pop up on the rest of the next <laughs> few days, you know, it's like you said, the longer just, it's just calming down from it. Okay. Yeah, uh, really. I mean, you want to give me a nature perception check? Do I really? It's up to you. Well, this is you working over that dread. Yeah. It's so, you do want to succeed in this. If you do so, we'll roll a. D6, a D3 to get rid of it. I don't know what's a success. It's only a 10. That is a success. Oh, good. Yeah. And do me a favor. Uh, roll that D6 and divide by two. One. <laughs> divide by, <laughs> by two. Everyone saw that one coming. All right. <laughs> uh, and down I get rid of a point, though, right? You do get rid of one set of dread. You're good. Mm-hmm. There. And yeah, honestly, as we've discussed, you always lose at least one dread before. So you only have one left at this point. Oh, right. okay. Cool. Yes. Yeah. And Bran, we are at your turn. Well, uh, no big surprise. I would like to remove some of my dread. All right. How's Brand doing that? Brand will spend some solitary time uh, praying and mentally going over and even reading various scripture from the Raven Queen. Um, mostly finding the reassurance that when I die, I know that my soul will move on through her judgment to the proper place, most likely serving at her side. For all mortals die, even if it is a horrific, even if it is a horrific death. Um, this, uh, as I've learned through the church, is a form of comfort uh, to know that though the mortal body will be destroyed, the soul will not be defiled. So that is mostly how he'll do it. Um, Aside from that, he will assist with various tasks throughout the ship and uh, offer checkups uh, to uh, the crew members, even dental. Make sure they're having their vitamin C. Oh, all right. Uh, what check do you want to roll to get rid of this dread? Uh, if I can choose, I would go with medicine. <laughs> if the you have another one, like religion, that's fine. Up, well, I mean, this is what you want to do to get rid of it. The way you described it seems more religion, but if you want to say okay. that the uh, process of checking up on these sailors and making sure their health is overall doing good and that's your way that you work through it i'll take whichever one you I'll want go to with me. medicine because it's just better <laughs> <laughs> you min maxing god <laughs> go ahead it would have been good anyways i rolled a 12 so 18 18 good go ahead and roll that d3 and you are at three if i recall correctly yes and i rolled a six yeah! yeah! Oh, guys, good job. You did great. All right, before I go around one more time asking, uh, Riley, a question posed to you. Yeah. You've just come from a town where everyone's creepy, weird, mm-hmm. and has scales. Just like me. It looks strange. Are you covering up your scales at this point? I've never Sailors covered... are giving you very strange looks. Yeah, no, I've, n- I've never covered up at all. Never like... covered up. Yeah. yeah. And what do you guys uh, think about this scaly friend of yours? Suspicion. He's so sus. <laughs> <laughs> He's so sus. 
<laughs> I've been helpful Just saying, so far. If you have a vote, you're going first, buddy. Aww. I saw him at the fence. I saw him at the fence. <laughs> That's uh, some Among Us humor there. Yeah. All right. I'm curious. Cleo, what do you think about this scale? Honestly, I'm just like not phased about other people that much. So (laughs) compared to that type of a thing, like it just is what he is. I don't know. You know, when when the people say she's kind of a little self centered, Cleo is. It's like (laughs) you're not helping that image at all. What happened? Just the greatest (laughs) gift on earth? That's me. (laughs) Uh, Anja, what are you thinking about these scales? Um, you know what? I I mean, they're scales. They're, they're, they're part of his appearance. They're part of what he, I kind of wonder what he is, like what uh, what race he is, you know. I'm a I half really elf, just know. like you. Yeah, sure. <laughs> um, I don't have scales, by the way. I kind of oh, wonder. I, I do wonder the backstory behind them, or is it, or if it's a racial thing or whatever. Um, but otherwise, it's. I also know it's none of my freaking business unless he wants to share. And I just continue to judge him on what he his actions, because ultimately that's really what matters. And Nearly so running far, the ship ship aground, poisoning the crew. You know, just yeah, normal helpful things. You know, <laughs> That. I do kind of wonder if in reality he's trying to actually um, sabotage the second. I said super sus. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm so helpful, but failing horribly that everyone's suspicious. I mean, I mean, I mean, no, I, I, you also did heal me in that combat. So, um, yeah, you dreamed that he heal you. you dream- That's right. It was only a freaking dream. And we never compared notes on the dreams, so. I, tr- true. I mean, I tried I to bring that up because we're we're basically everyone moved and I knew everyone moved and it's like the only time I've ever moved is when I've had a friggin' dream like that. That's that's that that happened right at the beginning of the, the campaign. So All I right. is actually is like, Nebby. How does Nebby react? <laughs> because I remember That's... after we fled from the townsfolk, she, she seemed chill, just laying on her pile of potatoes. <laughs> and then now, after all that, she still doesn't seem phased by me, and she was feeding me potatoes as I was studying the star charts. And Nebby like... seems well-traveled, so she, she may have some information I want to I wanna explore. She might Sus- also <laughs> not be able to see quite as well as everyone else. So the sus person is trying to a... uh, divert uh, uh, su- uh, sus. <laughs> Got it. All right, Cleo, we are up to you. Your second downtime activity. Uh, I believe there was a strip tease offered to raise morale. <laughs> raise morale. I don't think it raised my morale, but what you can. <laughs> Message that raised again. Mouth, but like I don't, I don't understand what I'm supposed to do. Jeremiah, then, dance. <laughs> <laughs> then again, I haven't actually. You really do whatever you like out about my character. Maybe my character is into that. I don't know. Maybe I just stand there and I'm like, don't you feel the graciousness of me penetrating on you guys? <laughs> what kind of check would you like to make? I'm still studying my star charts. <laughs> Performance, persuasion. I guess it'd be performance. I don't know, right? It's up to you. I'm Are just, you just like, standing there. If you're dancing, yeah, I'm just be standing there smiling. Just being inspiration. Give me performance. Yeah. That's right. You have that uh, nobility, that religious nobility. You know, when your father went out speaking to people, you were forced to dress up nice, and you had to give that smile. It's very similar to that. You don't raise anyone's morale. <laughs> My performance is a plus five also. This is very disappointing. Yeah, right? Uh, at one point, you're just standing there. You're That's giving just... a wink, and it's an awkward wink, and Mosetta runs over you in his efforts to swab the deck, and just your hair <laughs> now has this cowlick. And Mosetta doesn't notice. He just keeps walking by even as you're frustrated by that and and jeremiah goes over to help you my lady i i'm 
I'm supposed to be guarding you, and oh gosh, no, Jeremiah, Jeremiah, oh my gosh, are you okay? Uh, I have been doing a shitty <clears throat> job. I'm sorry, the dwarves <laughs> gave me something to help with waking up in the morning. I am so sorry, Cleo, for not for not <clears throat> showing up. <laughs> Oh God, Cleo! I feel so bad for you. Sorry. We need to roll the perception twenty-four, Cleo, for some fun reason. Or are you just pressing random buttons? I didn't roll that. Okay, must have been from something else. All right. Are you yeah. getting like really old alerts? I might be. Yeah, there there was not a perception lately. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's why I'm wondering. <laughs> Why you your own perception? Uh, do you want to see the monstrous thing that's been tailing your ship the entire time? Sure. No. No, you don't. No. <laughs> um, yeah. no. I can see it anyway. Got an eight. There you go. You saved yourself. Riley, what are you doing as your second downtime activity? Uh, second downtime activity. Hmm. Make a potato. Yeah, cook. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I've already explored potatoes. Ellen enough. potatoes. Um... Man, what else is there new to learn on the ship? I've talked to Aiden. I've talked to Kenza. I've tried to chat with Nebby on the first night, and she just wanted to talk about food. Um, I would there's say the dwarves if you start talking and to the anybody. Elves. They're not interested in talking with you, other than uh, Nebby. Now, like I said, if you want to do more research, you still have the accounting science book. You still have the letters um the science gosh. book you still have the science book yep oh i want to read the science book the accounting slash science book written by one a fen started about 84 years ago let me see that's the letters uh, oh nope i went the wrong way didn't i Yes, the oh my goodness, the accounting book is actually pretty straightforward. Starting eighty-four years ago, written by one A. Fen. Oh my goodness! No, at some point I got to get those little fancy. There we go. Yeah, at this point you have records of uh, baubles, trinkets used to trade for gold and resources with the deep ones. You find details of those who are blessed and those received sacrifices. And taking a, a look at this deep down, you start reading the ticks that they have, the special notations. Uh, you have about four, four different blessings. And next to certain names, they're, you can essentially tell that they're being blessed or they've been sacrificed. And you get to the fourth list of the names that you have. Um, there is nothing next to Isabel Walby's name. However, it appears that everyone else in that group was sacrificed as opposed to blessed. Which is strange because you would recognize that the family names always get a blessing. But this year it appears they were all sacrificed. And there are some notes from after that 23 years ago where the amount of gold and fish and such brought in has drastically reduced. You also read up on the experiments that was going on in the laboratory. Uh, one such is apparently attempting to make gunpowder waterproof. And you see various formulas for trying to do that. Recalling the bags that were in the bar uh, barrel of water. That was probably gunpowder being used to test the how the blessing in other creatures appears and talks of how they inseminated 
certain creatures, like the butterfly that Cleo is still wearing in her hair. Oh, all the creatures that were pinned up that had the slightly larger than normal eyes and ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Scales, yep. Mm -hmm. Talking about that, there's notes. Could this work on Valette's sandworms? Or perhaps the dragons of old? Question marks. Um, as we talk about it, dragons, no one's seen a dragon in thousands of years. In a coon's age! Coon as in the raccoon. I'm only slightly racist. What? Uh, and finally, uh, creatures capable of boosting a spellcaster's magical potential and their strange ability to morph into wands, rings, gems, amulets. And you think about the glass cloche that had several rings underneath it. This is just my way, folks, at home. Of being like, yeah, this is all the shit you missed. Fuck you. <laughs> but all in all, you can tell that um, there was a lot of wealth somewhere in this town, despite the surface not showing much. A lot of trade. And then after that last blessing assumedly gone wrong everything had gone worse for that town since then all right and cool that's what you got there that's interesting um so i saw information about what could be given to the sea or sacrificed to provide certain blessings that that was dictated Yes. Um, and apparently, is this A Fen has a very accountant like mine, and like, okay, we purchased these little trinkets from the local store, gave it to the Deep Ones, and in return, we have received uh, this many tons of fish this month, this amount in gold, and the numbers are staggering. You so, was there information on how to get the blessing of those creatures that would boost a spellcaster and were they oh no oh the bless oh the 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 creatures that the creatures uh, that could turn into like wands and rings and stuff that would boost a spellcaster's ability i i thought that came from like a sacrifice and they would come and and help no this is a creature that they found in oh let me get a die here. Eight. Figure that that correlates to. Uh, to Matrolk, which is the Gnomish Empire, not too far from Farzine itself. Okay. But there's little drawings, and it does look like this strange jeweled tick creature. Uh, cool. Mm -hmm. Anja. Nice. Yeah. You still have a level of dread left. There's mm. a lot of other things you could do as well. Or, I mean, I assume that you might be able to borrow stuff from from Riley if you ask nicely. He's busy doing other stuff. Borrow or he stuff? might try and claw your face off and eat you. No. What would I want to borrow from Riley, though? That's up to you. No, I'm just going to focus on get rid of the point. Um, I guess, I mean, the other thing I could think to do is work out, like, just do, like, um, like, a you know, like, like, I don't know, take out my swords and do, uh, sort of do practice, you know, Practice uh, fight, you know, fighting moves out on deck. Sure. Okay. I am going to 
start what I'm going to call a clock. Ah, crap. You can't see that. Essentially, no. it's a circle. It's a pie shaped. If you fill it up, you'll be rewarded for doing that as part of your downtime. So what is Shut it? Shut up, Cleo. Huh? What, so what exactly? Okay, so details. You are working on your sword fighting and you are trying to become more skilled in that. Sure. And every time you do that as a downtime activity or something to do that, you get rewarded when the circle gets filled up. Oh, neat. There's for out of the box downtiming, folks. Yeah. Um, and as you're practicing with your swords, Captain Kenza does approach you at some point. Okay. Yeah, I like spin around, like, oh. And she goes, ching, with her uh, uh, cutlass there. Looks like you're trying to take a head off of somebody. Well. I mean, but there are enemies. I mean, I'm pretty I think sure we've are... left those behind us, don't you think? Well, there was something that put three holes uh, into the ship. We did not leave that behind. No, you are probably right. Well, thank you for helping us with all these issues. And that is why I was I... sent on this. That is why I'm here. I wanted to apologize for my behavior in Rizante the, with um, the young boy Dale. Dave? Dale. Dale. I I mean, as you can see, we don't have room on this ship for more people and This is fair. I, yes. You see, this is my first this is my first actual honest job that I've ever had in my life. It's taken everything I had to actually buy this boat, pay these crewmen, and I... It's very important to me that this succeeds. And I thought there might have been some danger in taking him with us, and clearly there wasn't. And I'm just, I just wanted to apologize and say I'm sorry I couldn't do more than help pay for his fare. It's fair. It's okay. And I mean, I gave everything I had, uh, although I do have my ways where need be I can feed myself and such so I won't starve or anything although I do hope where we're going there will be a way to actually earn some money <laughs> you didn't grab anything from the laboratory that you were in how strange I was busy dealing with Dale I see maybe I, one of I, your I, other companions looted the place <laughs> Uh, and also, I did. I also did retrieve. My hands were kind of full. I had Dale in one hand and your bag in the other. I suppose there's a finder's fee for that, for bringing that bag back to you. Is there? I will do my utmost best. That's fine. Just get just get us to where we need to go. All right. Uh, by the way, you want to keep your guard up a little bit there. And she just and walks off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, propping an elbow up to get yeah, your guard yeah, up a little yeah. bit. Not, uh, I'll, I'm going to stick it a on. sword in my face. She oh, gets, okay. Yeah, all right. She can stick a sword in my face. <laughs> As Captain Kenza <laughs> walks away, Nuki the cat is just staring from behind the mast at you. Hey, and Cap. And tucking back in. Cap Captain. Well, I'm sure we've noticed this. Captain, can I ask you a question on that front? Sure. What, why is your cat watching us? Why is Nuki watching us? Nuki watches everybody. Isn't that right? And she gives her a scratch. It's just what she does. Walks away. Bran, your third. <laughs> or you're up next. Hey, your... did I get rid of that point of dread? 
uh, you still have one point of dread. Well, that was my point. I'm doing the whole thing to basically. Oh, block okay. Steam. You want to do that for that? Okay. Yes. All right. I apologize. But if you, but I don't mind counting for that too. In fact, I'll probably one just, or the other. What do you want? No, I'll do. No, I'll do it to get rid of the uh, the point of dread. What do you want to roll for it? Uh, I guess it'd be in a. I'd say attack rolls, maybe. Sure. Sure. Why not? Well, that was a good, that's 20, dirty 20. You lose that last point of dread. Yeah. As well as have a heart-to-heart moment with Captain Kenza. It was lovely. Brian, what would you like to do? Now that things are settled in my own house, um, I will think back to the events uh, and recall that Riley did take quite a bit of paperwork uh, and my curiosity is piqued of course about it so mm-hmm. I will head down to probably where Brand's stuff is or where he's been staying and studying I'm assuming I'd probably know where he would be uh, doing that mm-hmm. and uh, basically if he's there I will approach him if he's not I will actually start picking through some of the objects are you there uh i mean i i never leave this stuff behind my books and things uh if i can help it so i'm probably still studying uh so i'll approach uh, riley hey bran it did seem to take quite a bit from the estate did you not uh yeah yeah, I actually have quite a bit of interesting um, research materials that I found, and some journals. Did, did um, you want to? Did you want to read them? Actually, yes. Okay. I think it would give better insight to what exactly was going on there. Okay. Yeah, I'm not reading these uh, journals with the Walby family right now, and I pass them over. Just uh, please make sure that they don't get damaged and return them when you're done. Do I see the letters? <laughs> Ooh, I haven't studied the letters yet. Uh, I'm not passing those up yet until I have a chance to, to read those. I know, do I see them? Excuse me. I mean, they're my satchel still, I think. All right. All right. I guess I'll just go over some of the same stuff then. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I'm the next chance I get, I'm going to read the letters probably. And then, you know, when I'm done, I'll let you read them. I, I'm not I'm saying that out loud. That's out of, that, out of, that seems out of rather character. sus. What's apparently sus? your word is to the night is sus. Yes. I, I don't Ooh. understand what's this suspect that I lent you the journal, sir. No, no, no. You're being extremely guarded on everything. No, no, no. I just don't want the chance to lose. You don't want lose. other people to read stuff before you, it seems. Well, I just don't know you well enough, and I'm not sure that the materials will get returned undamaged, so I want a chance to study it first. Yes, the same could be said about you as I kind of grab the journals that he offered. We don't know what you might be doing with this as well. And I'll just kind of walk a bit away and uh, start flipping through. Okay. Kyle, you're muted. Brian, what did you grab? You said the journals. Uh, it's whatever you offered me. Yeah, that the journals. You recall or you read through any of the information that he had? Yep. I just There's go, a strange... Yeah, no, I recall, I recall a bunch of it, yeah. You see, with your study of medicine, you see the family connections with each of the drawings. I mean, it's not a picture, so it's not as perfect. And you end up with the last Isabel Walby, who disappeared and her picture is that of your mother's. I will. We've been dancing all around it, folks. Not yeah. that. It, not it was set in the dream. Pretty hard. <laughs> so I will his, stare at it for a little bit. His mother. I'll stare at it for a little bit. And I will stay quiet. 
but I will read as much information as I can to get any more details about this. I will probably reread it over again to understand the family tree better. Okay. You continue to read this and this horrible bread? Whether you call it <laughs> <laughs> whether you would think it's horrible, but what this family has done to themselves in order to achieve this immortality and money and riches and that they would sacrifice a part of themselves to become these monsters that live by the sea or live in the ocean at some point. And oh, your mouth seems a little bit dry. You feel a little dehydrated as you read them. And we will end there tonight. Nice! Hey everybody, that was Cred. We went 20 minutes over. I apologize. I did that April Fool's joke a little bit too long. But I wanted to make sure that it got through the whole thing. Not that it's important, because it's an April Fool's joke. There's nothing important in that. (laughs) April Fool's joke. That's it. Guys, if you enjoyed it, you can follow us on Twitch. If you want something a little bit more action or maybe more funny, join the guys over at Calamity or Margu. That's on Saturday. The other one's on Sunday. Uh, You can follow us on Twitch. You can follow us on Twitter. If you want to take a look at our YouTube archives, see the first four episodes, that's over there. If you want to join us in one of the one-shots coming up in the future next Saturday, uh, you can hit us up at mhoboinc at gmail.com. I'd like to thank our sponsors, Pirate Dog Dice, for when you roll like Ernie, Pirate Dog Dice. We're getting him a set as quick as we can. It's, it's not going to come soon enough, unfortunately, for him. Uh, and if your game stinks, smells a little bit more like fish than what you want it to, get Adventure Sense. Take a whiff of that. And if you're having trouble coming up with ideas for an adventure or writing your book, try the Shine Project. It's a great thing. If you don't want to look at our faces or their looks of terror and awe or just Bran's unfeeling gaze, go to the audio and download that podcast because honestly... It just creeps me out every time I have to look at those two (laughs) black abysses. (laughs) And finally, if you want to buy some of our cool merch, it's also located on there. Guys, (coughs) we do final thoughts afterwards, so we'll just wave at the camera right now. That's Caitlin as Cleo. We have Ernie as Mm. Riley. We have Carol as Anja and DJ as Bran. We'll see them in a couple weeks. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye.